Hi and welcome back to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this is the unveiling of the HP Reverb G2. Yes, the leaks were true and actually this is the HP Reverb G2, the successor of the original HP Reverb. The device is going to set you back $599 and if you are in the US, you'll be able to pre-order this in a couple of days. If you are from the rest of the world, then you'll be able to pre-order in June and the device is going to ship in fall 2020. HP developed this in partnership with Microsoft and Valve and in my opinion, this does look like the love child between the original HP Reverb and the Valve Index. The new device does feature four cameras now for better tracking and it comes with a manual IPD adjustment here, something that many of you had asked for. Also, it comes with the original Valve Index headphones here and also with updated displays that still feature the same resolution. All the details we're going to find out now directly from the team that made the device and all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back again here to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this channel is all about virtual reality. I'm bringing you unbiased and honest reviews of all the VR headsets and I'm bringing you breaking news just like this one here. So if you're interested in virtual reality, then absolutely subscribe to this channel and click on the bell button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. All right, I know that you want to know all the details about the HP Reverb G2. So let's directly get into the Q&A session with the team from HP who developed the device. And I'm happy to be here with Joanna Popper and John Ludwig from HP. Joanna, good to see you. Joanna, could you quickly tell us what you do at HP? Sure. Great to be here with you, Sebastian. I'm excited to be talking to all of your many, many viewers. I work at HP on the VR team and I focus on location-based entertainment and our go-to-market initiatives. All right. Super interesting. And John, what are you doing at HP? I am the uh, lead product manager for VR here at HP. That sounds like a really interesting job. So basically, you are making all the tough decisions about, your next, <laughs> about the next HP headsets. <laughs> With, with a lot of help. Yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> really cool. And of course, today we're going to talk about the HP Reverb G2. Super exciting. It's the successor of this year, the HP Reverb. And well, let's talk for a short moment about the HP Reverb, the, the original one. So it was very, very well um, liked, especially by, by the Simmer community, right? Were you, what do you think about that? Did you expect that? Yeah, we, we mostly made this as a commercial focused HMD when we came out with it. Uh, so we focused on the high resolution for architects, for people doing CAD work with a, a big sweet spot for the optics so you could easily get the headset on quickly and easily and get a good VR experience. Um, it was awesome to see the Sim community took up the headset and really enjoyed it and really validated a lot of what we did. And I think that's uh, their excitement for Reverb G1. Uh, is sort of what caused the evolution of Reverb G2 to come about. Cool, perfect. So let's directly dive in. Everybody wants to know more about the Reverb G2. So there were some leaks and it turned out the leaks were pretty, pretty right. <laughs> it was not me, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so John, how about you tell us now, tell us everything about the G2 that you think the audience should know? Sure, let me steam through some slides here and just stop me whenever you want. Okay. Uh, we'll do that. We'll put it in slideshow mode. Cool, so, you know, as I said, Reverb G1, very commercial focused. What, uh, what occurred then, obviously we had some gamers taking big interest in it and, you know, we were talking with Valve and they said, hey, we think you have the bones of an amazing gaming immersive VR headset here. But if we bring some of our technology into it, bring some of our iterative design work and work with you, we think we can make something truly amazing. And when Valve says something like that, you say, yes, of course. Uh, so this headset, still working with Microsoft, still a Windows Mixed Reality headset at its core, but now we're bringing in Valve and we'll talk a bit about what they've done and what they've brought to this headset as we go through the features. So there's five kind of sections I'm gonna run through quickly. Visuals, audio, input, comfort, and then just ecosystems. 
We still hold that title of highest resolution VR headset amongst major vendors. Uh, that comes from Reverb G1. The resolution for Reverb G2 is exactly the same. It's 2160 by 2160 per eye. Um, and while it may sound kind of disappointing that we haven't pushed it at first, uh, we have pushed the performance of the panel very far from Reverb G1. So we have improved contrast, improved brightness, but at the same time, we reduce the persistence, so you get a bit smoother image as you're going doing motion. Uh, and probably the biggest thing is we had a lot of perceived mirror on the first generation of Reverb, so you get that sort of dirty goggle or dirty glasses appearance where it's a little bit of a, a pattern as you look around the world, breaks your immersivity. With this, we've gotten rid of all that mirror. So now instead of looking through something into another world, you're just kind of looking into another world. Uh, looks way, way better. Um, simply amazing visuals at this point. Of course, okay. it's not all You said I can always stop you. So let me yes, directly please. go into that because that's going to be super interesting for our viewers. So the, um, the same resolution, but way better LCD panel. It's still an LCD panel, right? Still LCD, still 90 hertz, um, but brand new panels. Okay, great. So yeah, the Mura, it was a little bit of a problem, but now this is like very different now or tell us a bit more about the perceived difference in Mura. Uh, you know, you could perceive mirror before and we call it perceived mirror because technically it wasn't mirror, it was caused by something else. But when you saw it, it looked like mirror. Okay. Um, and with the G2, it's all gone. Uh, I mean, that's the best way to describe it. You saw a mirror before, now you don't see it. Great, perfect. And for the resolution, it was a great resolution before. It's already like, yeah, it's, it's just so clear. And in some of the games, it even felt for me like photorealistic. So that's great that it's still there. And um, so what was your um, thoughts about staying, sticking with this resolution? Did you think like, hey, that's already good enough and that's what the current graphics cards can actually run? And that's why we stick with this? Or why did you stay with this resolution? Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, you got to balance everything between the actual cost of the device you want to make, the resolution you want to push, but then also the machines you're connecting it to. Um, and we were pretty happy with where the 2160 by 2160 was hitting and that kind of cost versus feature versus how what kind of PC needs to run it. You know, even though we do run it 2160 by 2160, we still have to have the mode in there that kind of has the resolution down to 1440 by 1440 because a lot of people still have PCs that can only run kind of first generation VR resolutions and aren't ready for the next big step. Um, so it didn't feel right to take that next big step, but it, we decided to go focus in on the actual quality of the panel, making sure that's amazing because that is just as important as the resolution. And I think that's one of the big learnings that everyone's had through VR for the first few years of VR is that it's not just about the pure resolution count, it's about how good those each of those pixels are. Right, right. And then on the marketplace, you'll be competing against the Rift S and the Index. And yeah, for these, it's still going to be the highest resolution. So I believe that's going to be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to try it out, of course. So, okay, please keep on going and then probably I okay. can find another way to hop in. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we get to the fun part where I get to say Valve's name. Uh, <laughs> and so the optics we put on top of these panels are designed by Valve. Um, they focused on angular resolution, making sure it's clear, very clear to the edge. Um, so big improvement there. Uh, really excited about that. They're not only doing the design lenses, they're also doing the calibration for the optics as well. Uh, and of course, you know, with the first generation reverb, we had the wide sweet spot, um, which gets you a great experience for anyone taking the headset on and off very quickly, um, but doesn't get you the perfect experience. And so for this, we had to add mechanical IPD adjustment because we want everyone to have their eyeball centered with the center of the optics to get the perfect image you expect from these, these optics. Um, and so that's a big change we've done gen for gen. You do need to go adjust it, of course. Uh, there's a little slider on the bottom. It goes from 60 to 68 millimeters. Um, and that way you get your eyes centered. You get the best possible performance from the optics and the LCD panels. You get the correct FOV no matter what, you know, how far apart or how narrow your eyes are. Um, so very excited to add mechanical IPD. I think everyone here at the team decided that's one thing they really want to make sure got into this product um, after the first generation of Reverb. I think that's a big plus. So that was really one of the big annoyances of the first Reverb. I had some people, lots of people here to come to my office to try it out and they loved it, but the, the people with a high or very low FOV uh, IPD, they couldn't really use it. So that's definitely good. So um, on the pictures, that leaked, actually you could see like like three dots at the slider. 
Um, what are those dots for? Or is it's, it a uh, It's just there to help people know so where they know where the middle is and where the ends are. Okay. Uh, it's not like they're not de-dense or anything. It's a smooth slider, so you can go anywhere okay. from 60 to 68. But now you know exactly where 64 is, where 60 and where 68 is. All right. Good. Good to know. Because some people thought like, okay, you can just go like middle, big and small, but no, just the normals. <laughs> so it's very similar to, to what we see with with the Valve Index. Yeah? Basically, it looks a bit like the loft child of the HP Reverb and the, and the Valve Index. <laughs> Yeah. Shocking. It's a new marketing slogan, actually. <laughs> Love child of HP Reverb and, and Valve Index. Thank wow, you, you're welcome. Yeah, I give it to you for free. <laughs> Thank you. The Love child. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. All so right. me mechanical IPD definitely important. Cool. I'm going to keep going on from visuals. Then I'm going to go on to uh, audio. Uh, and audio, once again, I think you'll find something that looks very familiar. Uh, you'll see. Hey, that looks a lot like the Valve Index headphones and you would be exactly correct. Uh, same drivers, uh, same audio setup. We literally ripped it off the valve index and implemented it onto the Reverb G2. If, if it isn't broken and everyone loves the valve index headphones, then why fix it? Um, so they still sit about 10 millimeters off your ear, so you don't get any kind of pressure on your ears during long play sessions. You can also talk with other people who are around you, but you also get that amazing frequency response from that BMR driver just across from bass to highs. So super excited about that. Uh, they're still removable if you want to remove them and use your own headphones. But uh, from our play testing, we don't think many people are going to want to do that. All right. And of course, dual microphones in case you want to talk to people. Duh. Um, is it the same microphones that are also to be found in the index? No. Okay. Uh, same, similar microphones that we have on the Reverb G1. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, one of the top complaints about uh, you know Windows Mixed Reality through the first few generations has been controllers, um, and people want more new, more ergonomic controllers. So what we have here are new, more ergonomic controllers, um, and then we also adjusted the control layout to get it more towards the industry standard. It makes it easier on uh, people who are transitioning between headsets as well as developers who want to target multiple headsets with one control input at release. So we have the A, B, and X, Y buttons instead of the trackpad. And we also now have the uh, the grip is instead of being a button where it's just kind of a click, uh, it's now analog just like the trigger. So you, uh, it's a smooth pull on that grip. Besides controllers, we do of course have two more cameras for tracking. That gets us more than double the controller tracking volume since there's a lot of overlap on the front two cameras uh, to do the, the head tracking. Um, so you got more than two times the volume for actually tracking your hands. For me personally, We've been playing a lot of Half-Life Alex, as has everyone else, I'm sure. And uh, I started out playing on the G1 with the two front cameras. And I found when you, you do a lot of throwing of stuff, there would be grenades or boxes. And I always had to keep my hands you know, in front. So I was doing kind of granny style throws or the discus throw. Uh, with the four cameras, within five seconds, I'm throwing like a baseball pitcher. Um, so just a normal throwing motion. So you get much more natural input with those extra cameras. Is, No surprise to anyone, of course, that having more cameras is better and getting that wide uh, area to track your hands. Um, they come prepared via Bluetooth. Otherwise, the uh, you know it's it's Windows Mixed Reality. It's it's leading head head and controller tracking uh, for Inside Out. Um, you know there have been some rumors on the internet of Lighthouse compatibility. We don't have that, uh, so it is only Inside Out tracking with Windows Mixed Reality base. Okay, I think this slide is going to be really interesting and I do have some questions for that, of course. So I would like to ask you, these four, this four camera setup, is this the new Windows Mixed Reality standard that comes from Microsoft or is that something that you, you, you did by yourself? Um, no, no, we have to work with Microsoft. Uh, all, all the tracking technology comes from them. So this is something we've been uh, working with them on for a little while here to make sure heads are out there with four cameras. Okay. So But the base technology is still all Microsoft, of course. Okay. So does it does this mean we can expect a slew of other um, Windows Mixed Reality headsets of Generation 2? I have no idea. Oh, you have no idea. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you'd have, to, you'd have to talk to all those companies. And yeah, see right, right. Okay. At like, least. <laughs> we, okay. we, we work closely with Microsoft and we know what we're doing and what we're doing with Microsoft. But all right. Either. Okay, good. Um, then for the controllers, so now there's no more trackpad and they do look more ergonomic. 
I'm wondering, these controllers, is this also something that comes from Microsoft? Like like the first the first controllers, I believe there was like Microsoft's design, the standard design, and you just took them over. And is it the same here or is it something that you did? Uh, it's been a combination. So these are HP controllers. However, these controllers are backwards compatible with all other Windows Mixed Reality headsets. So if you have a Samsung Odyssey or a Reverb G1 or one of the first generations of WR headsets, you can buy these controllers from HP and then hook and you know connect them up and use them. Um, obviously, you'd still only have two camera tracking in that case, but you'd have new improved controllers. Um, however, the Reverb G2 only works with these controllers. So old controllers don't work with the Reverb G2, but the Reverb new Reverb controllers are backwards compatibility backwards compatible with other Windows Mixed Reality headsets. Are you going to sell just the controllers for all these people who want these controllers? Yep, I hope there's a lot of people that want these controllers too. I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> all right, that's good news. And it's still going to be powered by batteries. Still double A's, which we include in the box. Uh, so two double A's per controller. Okay, so probably uh, they will last just as long as the other ones for the other controllers. Same thing, right? Very similar. Yeah, okay. as you see, the, the the actual ring itself is the same between controllers. It's only you know beneath the ring, the handle, and the controls that actually changed. Okay, great. So yeah, that's that's interesting, and um, yeah, this basically gives you parity with all the other controllers, right? Right from Oculus. So it's going to make it easier for developers. Is yeah, I this, think this the, the thought behind it, or yeah, yeah, that's definitely the thought behind it. Um, makes it a lot easier for developers to target all VR. You know, instead of having to make a WMR specific input. Um, so that uh, okay. Okay, so these controllers, they were developed by you and Microsoft together. This is not something that Microsoft gave you. Correct. Okay. So does it mean we will only see these controllers with your headsets? I, I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, okay. I would hope that other, you know, <laughs> someone had a headset, they would make new controllers too with improved ergonomics. Right, right. Okay. Um, but these specific ones, these yes, are yours. Okay, got it. And you're going to sell them. Um, do you do you have a price point if somebody just wants to buy those controllers? We don't have a price point on just controllers yet. That's going to take uh, probably another month or two for us to figure out. Okay. Good. All right. No other that. We'll go to comfort. Um, if you can actually see behind my head, you'll see that the, the rear of the headband, we spent a lot of time on it. It looks a lot like a valve index. Uh, it's not exactly the same. Uh, we've done quite a bit of iteration on this, and that's been one of the probably the fun parts of this development with valve is just the amount of iterations we've done on ergonomics between the face mask, the rear headband, going between different shapes. Um, we ended up with something that looks relatively similar to the index for the rear headband. Um, and the face mask is now magnetically attached, similar to what you'd see on an index. So it's a plastic backing with a bit of flex. So it kind of flexes it close around your face to seal off the light. Um, but you can magnetically remove it very quickly. Um, on the front and the back, since we want to talk about cleanability, since you know, in this day and age, cleanability is super important now, uh, we removed the front and back decorative fabric you'd see on a Reverb G1. So you can just plastic and wipe it down. And we will have optional accessories for the rear head pad and the front face mask that are uh, a wipeable material instead of the fabric. So it comes just with fabric, so super comfy, but if you want to share it around, wipe it down, sanitize it, we do offer accessory rear head pads and face masks as well. Okay, uh, so for the for the face mask, again, it's like connected to the headset with magnets, just like the same, yep. like the, the Valve Index. Is it exactly the same casket? So could I use my Index one and, and plop it into this one? No. It okay. is not exactly the same. Uh, you know, there's a big size. You know, there's just a big size difference between the two. Um, you know, they use larger LCD panels. The physical layout of the headsets much bigger than the reverb headsets, which use the smaller LCD panels. Okay. Um, so but no, the material, the material is exactly the same, though. It is very similar, but not exactly the same, but very similar. Mm -hmm. It looks exactly uh, the same. Well. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> okay, I believe you. I mean, you must know it way better than me. <laughs> um, but very similar. Okay. Uh, we've also increased the size of all the padding. We've about doubled it. Um, so the weight stayed very similar, but we've actually increased just the surface area of the padding to lower the pressure on your face. Um, the cable 
was one of our big things we wanted to improve. We were four and a half meter with a double barrel cable for it was kind of hard to flex it in certain directions. Um, and it had that inline connector that some people would unhook. Uh, so we still have a removable cable, but it connects directly into the headset. Um, and it's now a single barrel and it's six meters long. Uh, so a much nicer cable, much less intrusive on your VR experience. Um, it still connects through DisplayPort 1.3, um, but we, ha we do need a little bit more power now for the extra cameras and the brighter displays. So it terminates in USB-C instead of USB-A. If you plug it into a USB-C that has power delivery, such as I don't know, Thunderbolt or you know on the back of an RTX graphics card, uh, then you're good to go. If you plug it into one that doesn't have extra power, just has a normal four and a half watts of USB, we do have an included wall wart that you can plug in to give you the extra power that you need. So you just have to plug that into the wall somewhere. Uh, and that comes in the box as well. Great. How did you make it happen? I can remember we talked uh, when the G, G, uh, G1 came out, and I think you told me that the cable length at that time was a big problem. And I asked you at that time, can you extend it? And it was not so easy to extend it because of the high resolution. So, so how did you make that happen that now you get a six meter cable, which is like really long? A lot of hard work and some secrets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's no, great it's just team something... working on it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Focused on it, yeah. Great. You know, we've had an extra, you know, an extra year now to just work on that cable, that exact same problem and find solutions to it. Um, and so that's one of the benefits of getting the same resolution. You can start iterating and working on these problems that you entered, that you found last year and just make it better rather than just trying to push resolution higher every year. Um, one of my favorite features is the 90 degree flip feature. Um, so we still have the elastic built in. It's still the three Velcro strap fitment like you'd see on the G1 um, with the elastic built in so you can pull away from your face like a ski goggle. Um, but now actually the headset rotates, the, the armbands rotate 90 degrees vertical, so it actually ends up perpendicular. You can't really see it here, is it? Well, okay. Um, so anyways, it, it goes vertical up. And that way you can actually just put up the headset to your face with no headband in the way. Um, so if you just want to get in there quickly and just check if you know everything's running properly, you just put up to your face, no headband to deal with, take it off. Or if you're a glasses user, I generally put it on, you know, mass first and then rotate it down behind my head. Um, it's a really nice feature. I honestly, I didn't expect it to be amazing. There was this person named Scott on our team who was super into it and said, look, we have to have this for people going into VR quickly and easily. And we were like, oh, okay, Scott, he really pushed it. And then we get the, we get the devices, the prototypes, and it's like, wow, Scott. This is an awesome feature. Thank you so much. You see, that one only goes up like 15 yeah, degrees. Yeah, yeah, right. I just want to, okay, so here, this is just like, yeah, yeah 15 or 20 degrees. So yeah. the new version goes all the way up. That's all the way that's what it means. Let right? me show it again, but in front of your body. So, so the virtual oh. background doesn't mess it up. Oh, nice. See, look at that. See, it goes vertically. Ah, okay. Now. Okay. So you can just slap it onto your face really easy. Right, right. But that does not mean when you wear it that you could like flip it up, like for example, the Cosmos, right? No, no, okay. not like that. For that, we'll still use the the, uh, the yeah. elastic so you can pull it away. I, I can flip it onto my forehead though. So I don't know if it, so I can definitely feel feel the flip. Okay. Yeah. okay. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it may be depend on your, your shape, your inside of your face as well. Like all things. Right, right. I, I feel like I'm able to flip it. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the other thing we, we also talk about comfort is just manual IPD adjust because getting the IPD matched perfectly between what the content is output at and where your eyes are set at does mean for longer sessions, you're going to have much more comfortable eyes than you do when you have a mismatch between what the display out is coming as versus where your eyes are set. So that IPD adjust is huge for comfort as well for long term viewing comfort for your eyes. Um, so it's not all about just pure ergonomics. It's also about IPD adjust. And that's mostly the product. Uh, it is still Windows Mixed Reality based, and then we've been working hard. Um, you know, Valve's putting their name behind this, so they've been working really hard on the, the Steam VR bridge to Windows Mixed Reality to make sure it's as close to a native experience as possible for customers. Even using Win Windows Mixed Reality, you saw some big updates come through for that bridge up to the Half-Life Alex launch, and they're continuing to just make the experience vastly better. Um, so at this point, it's really amazing using Steam VR on Windows Mixed Reality. It wasn't always that way when it first launched back with the original uh, Mixed Reality headsets, but now it's a pretty amazing experience and good enough that Valve wanted to jump in on this Mixed Reality headset with us and Microsoft. All right, good. Thank you for the presentation. 
And now the tough questions. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, Good John. Time. Yeah, right. John, Boom. people are interested, of course, into something that you skimmed a bit over in the presentation, and it's the FOV. Okay. <laughs> ah, sure. Right. So uh, let's let's talk about the FOV. How 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 is it as compared to the the G1 or to the other headsets? It's roughly the same as G1. Um, however, more people get the correct FOV now. So what we saw on the G1 is that you know people with the correct IPD or the average IPD I should say would get that 114 field of view. They wouldn't see the edges of the LCD panels, right? Everything would be great. But once you start to get you know off of that you know standard IPD, you start to see a little bit of the edge of the LCD panels occasionally. Um, maybe see a little reflection off the eye tube, and your FOV kind of start to shrink a little bit. Um, so with this, what we've done is a lot of work on just, you know, one, making mechanical IPD works so that everyone gets the correct FOV and everyone gets, you know, no ability to see the edges of the display anymore so that the FOV feels better. Um, the clarity of the edge makes the FOV feel larger. Um, but something we spent a lot of cycles on is just, and this is crazy, it's, it's the distance from your eye to the lens. Um, so we've been through quite a few face mask designs at this point, trying to get the exact right distance between your eyeball and the lens because even the smallest amount of difference creates a huge FOV um, change. Um, so the face mask design has been all about making sure that your eyes are the correct distance from the lens, and that combined with mechanical IPD gets you that full field of view every time. So no big crazy increase uh, of field of view, but everyone should get a good field of view experience. All right, so I think that's that's really good to know because I did have the problem that I saw the edges of the display. And for some reasons, when I put this on, it was a bit tilted, I would say, tilted up. And also for some people that I put this on, it, it didn't really fit very well. And yeah, people could see probably even under the display some 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 black, black um, borders, which kind of put people out of the experience. So, so now this is totally gone for all the IPD, um, yeah, um, if you put the IPD right, then it's, you won't have this problem at all. And, and that's something that Val has helped a lot with, with okay. the design process. So we're fixing some of these these uh, perceived issues and making sure the face mask is the correct shape to get your eyes in the right spot. Um, so a lot of work. Obviously, they design the lens. They have a lot of uh, you know a lot of skin in the game when it comes to making sure we all get a really great FOV and optics experience with this one. So they've been uh, sticklers on that. All right. So field of view, you, you're writing 114. So um, why would you write 114? Is it a bit more than, than the other competing headsets like, like the Rift S? You will probably be competing against yeah. the Rift S. Yeah. So this, and, and the Rift S is what I show up here on the screen. Um, All right. Yep. Yes. So it's 110. Uh, we're saying we're saying this is 114. Yeah. And is it? Rift S is 110. I do remember, Sebastian, some of your videos last year, people kept saying, I think he's saying 140. And then others said, no, he's saying 114. I think you're, yeah, you're right. German, your German pronunciation. My, my, my accent, yeah. <laughs> it threw some people off. So I just 114. We are saying 114. 114. Yeah. yeah, but it's still, it's like four degrees more than what you write here for the Oculus Rift and S. It, well, so the, that Oculus Rift S comes from them. They advertise as 110. Um, everyone, I, field of view is such a crazy thing for people to calculate and people do different ways. Mathematically, this is our field of view in the diagonal, um, which is what they're advertising as well. It slightly bigger, but are you really going to know it's four degrees, honestly? I don't Who know. Knows? That. Um, so <laughs> put it, put it on your head, and, and you'll have to see whether you notice the extra four degrees or not. Okay. Okay. Um, but mathematically, slightly larger. All right. So, but it's probably comparable to what the G1 had. Yeah, the field of view target is exactly the same as G1. Um, just making sure it's a great field of view from edge to edge. Okay. So our our uh, our advertised our field of view for G1 was 114 as well. Right, I can remember. And I'm, I'm wondering about your design decision. So for sure, you must have been thinking, okay, what do we do now with the G2? Do we improve some specs? And do we go for a higher FOV, um, just like the Index, for example, or some other headsets? So could you please um, tell us a bit why you came to the conclusion it should be the same FOV? 
Yeah, I mean, so you're balancing a lot, right? Um, in a few different areas. One, you're balancing when you increase your field of view, your perceived resolution also goes down, right? Your pixels per degree is going to go down, so it's not quite as sharp. Um, so, you know, we saw a lot of sim gamers really like the fact that things looked realistic. And so if you say, well, I'm going to move it up to 130, it's, it's going to look less realistic than Reverb G1. Um, and so that's something you got to balance where the right place is. But probably the biggest thing for us is kind of the size and weight discussion. So we get our headset to be significantly smaller and lighter than an Index or a Vive because we use smaller LCD panels. So we can make the device physically smaller. Um, that means that for the same field of view, you would have to have a more powerful lens if you wanted to get to the same field of view as like a valve index. And there are some trade-offs when you go to that more powerful lens in terms of your optics quality, um, which again, then then you're sacrificing again, you not only you're sacrificing some of your pixels per degree, but you're also sacrificing some of your optics quality as well and the clarity. Um, so we really believe in getting a super clear image with really high PPD and also small, lightweight and comfortable. So something had to give, right? And in this case, it's we didn't go take field of view to the next step. <laughs> All right. This generation. Okay, but so you, yeah, it's why not? It's uh, very clear you want to focus on that brilliant picture. And I'm sure lots of people will like that. Those who want to see all the details in the flight sims and so on. So I think, yeah. That's that's all right. So um, you mentioned before that Valve was working on the lenses or the lenses come from Valve, something like this you mentioned. Designed. So the, the design, okay, the design. So now people will wonder, oh my goodness, <laughs> does it come with the gut rays of the, the Valve Index? Because the Valve Index is an amazing headset, but the one problem that lots of people don't like are the gut rays. So, could you like tell us, is it the same like the Valve Index or less or more? Um, it's definitely less. <laughs> okay, uh, I think it's definitely for us, that's that's a big part of our lens test as we go through it, right? It's one, what is your clarity as you go across the lens, uh, both in the center as well, all the way out to the edge, but also it's kind of the internal reflections give you God rays. Um, and so we've been through a few variations of these lenses. I'll tell you, our, our first variation had quite a few god rays, and we said that's not acceptable. Um, so we had to go back to the uh, back to another round of, of lens manufacturing for that. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the proof is in the pudding, and we're going to just have to send you a unit here. I think um, so too. Yeah. So you can test it out and and stuff for yourself because no, no one's going to trust me, right? They're going to trust <laughs> you, and that's why you're the press. Exactly. Um, so we got so we got to get you in your hands so you can say, hey, this thing's got. No God rays. And, uh, well, I will have right. a very clear look at it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, so not the same lens technology as in the in the Valve Index, right? I mean, for the Valve Index, they use like a um, double lens design. I believe it's not the same here with with the Reverb G2, right? Yes, they use a they use a doublet lens design. Um, so ours is slightly different. Uh, we we do a, a single piece lens, uh, so it's still their design, but uh, just manufactured slightly differently than you'd see in the index. Okay, great. Then people will wonder what kind of computer, what kind of uh, computer requirements do you have in order to really use that device at its full quality? Yeah, um, so we do have a few different modes. You can run the device at full resolution, 90 hertz, um, in which case uh, you're looking at like uh, you know, first gen like a 1080 or 2070 being kind of your your min to get that good performance. Um, we do also have, and that's the same exact specifications as the Reverb G1. You know, the resolution hasn't changed, so the spec requirements haven't really changed. Um, we do, of course, also have the half resolution mode if you have you know like one of those early VR ready graphic cards like a 1060 and you don't have quite the beef to go run this full 2160 by 2160, it'll run it at 1440 by 1440 approximately. So that first generation VR um, and get you going there. So we, we like to make sure that everyone can run it as long as they have a VR ready graphics card that's been advertised that way. And that's why we have the half resolution mode. But um, yeah, you're looking at like a 2070, 1080-ish for the full resolution 90 Hertz for your typical VR application. All right, great. So <clears throat> before you mentioned that the cable would be like uh, you directly connect it now to the headset itself. So it's not like here with a G2 that the cable is sticking out and then you will connect it there. Yep. Okay. 
It's not like that. Uh, it goes directly into the headset and gets connected there. Um, that way it's protected from a lot of the stresses and you don't have this big you know, connector hitting the back of your neck while you're playing, which took some people out of the experience. So we want to get rid of that. Okay, great. Then um, I'm wondering, you have this six meter cable. Are you still supplying like a short cable for all these arcades that might want to use it with a backpack? With a Absolutely. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, this headset now, is it now squarely focused at gamers? Because the first uh, generation was more at enterprise actually, and then <laughs> gamers picked it up. Is it different now with, with the G2? I wouldn't say that we've stopped focusing on enterprise, and that'd be incorrect. What we have done is we've added gamers in as a key customer for this headset. Um, the first one we said, gaming is not important to us, we're focusing on commercial. Um, this one, obviously, with Valve and we're saying, hey, gamers are super important, number one for this product. But, you know, what commercial customers want is not that different from gamers. Everyone wants a really amazing, immersive experience. They also want to play games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> from I mean, time to time, uh, right? Put in some, like, <laughs> some Alex. <clears throat> yeah, it's not like commercial customers saying, hey, you know, I don't want sharper visuals. I don't want to cancel IPD. Um, so, so everyone wins here. Essentially, yeah. no, I wanted to add on that point that you asked about the arcades in particular. There, there was, we've, we've had some questions on whether or not you need a separate license for arcades or LBEs, and you don't. So when, the way we sell this, it's you know, you can use it in a commercial environment, an enterprise environment. You can use it at home. All right, great. So you can use it basically anywhere. So. Um, Okay, we talked about lots of things already. I think so tracking is way improved. Probably you could tell us a bit more about the tracking. Um, is it now comparable with the Rift S? Yeah, probably you'll say yes. <laughs> right. We think uh, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, on the first generation or, or Reverb G1, the head tracking was great. Um, the, the, big, the big miss was that you couldn't get your hands, you know, once they moved out of the field of view out here, you couldn't track them. And that was a big problem, not so much for commercial customers, but more so for gamers who were, you know, playing Beat Saber and their hands are going out wildly, but they need that accuracy as they're swinging the lightsabers. Um, and so that's kind of the really big improvement. The head tracking is still class leading and has been from when Microsoft with their Windows Mixed Reality platform, but now the controller tracking is caught up. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So people will want to buy this most probably. And <laughs> I'm wondering when is it going to come out exactly and in which regions? Uh, it's coming out in all regions. Um, I think right now what we're doing is we have pre-orders in North America going live end of this month. Um, and then Joanna, when do pre-orders roll out for So Europe? So just to go, so, so shipping in the fall. So that's the first oh, yeah. first big headline. It's available. It's, it'll be shipping in the fall. We're super excited to get into everyone's hands, and we are we're doing a little bit different of an approach in terms of pre-orders. So what we're doing is we're giving people the opportunity to pre-order early. So in the U.S. region, it's the, the pre-orders are going to start rolling out already the end of this month, and then in the other regions all around the world, it, uh, we'll be having uh, select countries that start pre-orders in mid-June, rolling out through July. And, and as John said, the, the availability will, will be global. So when it, when it ships, in, ships in the fall, it will be global availability. If you're wondering why we're doing this, you know, we've, we've certainly seen, this, this is a very unusual year in terms of some, you know, some of the impact to supply chain. And we've also seen some companies struggle, struggle in meeting, you know, meeting uh, the demand for it with the available supply given everything that's happened this year. So we want to we want to give people an opportunity to opt in for the pre-orders early and make sure that you know they get their first they, they get the, the headsets as soon as we start shipping. Okay. And so you'll be able to get to the pre-orders by you can go to the, the local HP page in in your region or through through Steam through the uh, Steam VR page as well. So we're super excited, you know, John just mentioned all of the product, you know, the ways that we worked with Valve on the product side. Um, we're also, you know, partnering up and working with Valve closely, as well as Microsoft, on the on the go to market and on the distribution. So you'll be able to go to this, this Steam VR webpage where so many of you are already there. You know, 
interacting with all of your content and your games and be able to click through to order there as well as going to the Microsoft store. So lots of different ways to be able to, to buy. Okay, so for people who want to buy this, there's lots of ways to get it. <laughs> yes. Good to know. We want, Good to know. We, we want to make sure that pe people have, have their full access. Um, and, and again, sh you know, that's a, you know, putting in a pre-order and then it'll be shipping in the fall. All right. Thank you so much for all of the information. The official price point you can find down in the description of this video. And yeah, well, thank you so much uh, for your time. No, thank, thank you, you for having us on. We're really, really excited about this product. We think that you know that it's just what the market's looking for, and we're excited to hear feedback from everybody. Oh wow! I will definitely put all my feedback into a video, <laughs> and you will watch it. Thank you so Excellent. much, and looking forward to see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you all. And that's it for the unveiling of the HP Reverb G2. I'm really glad that I could bring you this information so early here on the channel. And of course, I would like to thank Joanna and John for taking their time for the Q&A. Now I would like to hear from you. What do you think of the HP Reverb G2? Are you going to pre-order this? Are you going to wait for the MRTV review? Please do leave your comments down in the comment section below. That's it. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MOTV yet, do so now. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.